Welcome to the History Unplugged podcast, the unscripted show that celebrates unsung heroes, myth busts historical lies, and rediscovers the forgotten stories that changed our world. I'm your host, Scott Rank. Hi, everyone. Welcome to an in between episode where I answer any question that you have for me about history. Today's question is this. How many of the former American presidents owned slaves? I'm going to answer that question. I'll give you the simple answer. And I'm also going to dig into some of the interesting stories that come about of presidents owning slaves, especially since they took an oath to uphold the Constitution, a document that says all men are created equal, when they're also engaging in institution slavery that obviously says that all men are not created equal. How do they deal with that hypocrisy? All right, so let's see how many U.S. presidents owned slaves. And for reference, Evan Andrews wrote a great article for this that's on history.com that runs down the list. Well, in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, slaveholding was common among the statesmen who served as president. There were at least 12 chief executives, which is over a quarter of all American presidents, who owned slaves during their lifetimes. And eight of them held slaves while they were in office. Well, slave labor was an integral part of early America. They helped build the White House, and all of the earliest presidents owned slaves, with the exception of John Adams and his son, John Quincy Adams, which could partly be due to their ideals, but it might also be that they weren't large plantation owners and simply didn't have the need. After all, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, and he owned slaves. George Washington kept about 300 bondsmen at his Mount Vernon plantation. Thomas Jefferson who called slavery an assemblage of horrors, owned about 175 servants. Not to mention his relationship with Sally Hemings, which I'll get into in a second. Other slave owners were James Madison, James Monroe, and Andrew Jackson, who held several dozen slaves. And Martin Van Buren owned one during his career. Before he became president, William Henry Harrison owned several inherited slaves. And John Tyler and James K. Polk were both slaveholders during their stints in office. The last person who had slaves while he was president was Zachary Taylor, who served from 1849 to 1850 and had about 150 servants on plantations in Kentucky, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Andrew Johnson, who was Abraham Lincoln's vice president before becoming president in 1865, had at least half a dozen slaves in his native Tennessee. He even wanted Lincoln not to apply the Emancipation Proclamation to his home state of Tennessee. The last president to own slaves was Ulysses S. Grant. He served two terms between 1869 and 1877, and he had one slave named William Jones in the years before the Civil War, but gave him his freedom in 1859. Later on, to go with the times, Grant said that slavery was a stain to the Union that people had once been bought and sold like cattle. Now, Thomas Jefferson's relationship with Sally Hemings is interesting and even stranger than I realized. Most historians believe that Jefferson was the father of Hemings' six children that were born after the death of his wife, Martha Jefferson. Four survived into adulthood and were given freedom by Jefferson. Many believe that their liaison started when Jefferson was in France. In 1787, Hemings, who was 14, accompanying Jefferson's youngest daughter, Mary, to London and then to Paris, where Jefferson, who was 44 at the time and a widow, was serving as a U.S. minister to France. Hemings spent two years there, and Hemings remained enslaved in Jefferson's house until his death. Historians mostly believe that the two had children together because a 1998 DNA study found a match between the Jefferson male line and a descendant of Hemings' last son, Eston Hemings. Well, here's where it's strange. Hemings was not 100% black genetically. She and her siblings were three quarters European. She was the daughter of John Wales and a mixed race woman that he kept as a slave, Betty Hemings. To top it all off, it's widely believed that she was the half sister of Jefferson's wife, Martha Wales Skelton. And as an infant, Sally came to Monticello as part of Martha's inheritance of her father's slave holdings. When Jefferson died, Sally's four children, who had survived into adulthood, Beverly, Harriet, Madison, and Eston, were seven-eighths European in ancestry, and descendants of those three who entered white society as adults identified as white. So Sally looks very different than what we would imagine her to look like. And her being the half-sister of Jefferson's first wife, which wasn't plainly clear at the time, Jefferson might not have even known it, 
makes this whole story a lot more weird and confusing can show how bizarre the institution of slavery could really get and affect even presidents in early American history. Well, thank you so much for the question. If any of you would like to submit one to me, you can do so by going to historyunpluggedpodcast.com. There you can send me one. I'll be glad to answer anything that you can throw at me. Thanks for listening to the History Unplugged podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get your daily dose of all things history related from ancient Greece to the Cold War. You can do that by going to historyonthenet.com forward slash subscribe. Speaking of history on the net, if you want to dive deeper, go to our site historyonthenet.com and there you'll find blog posts, book reviews, and all of our other podcast episodes. Plus, don't forget to rate and review this podcast so we can bring you the best daily history content possible. We'll see you next time at the History Unplugged podcast. 